In this video, you're going to learn about what is node eviction. In a grid infrastructure cluster, we could have two or more nodes made into a cluster. And the synchronous nature of this is taken care of with two heartbeats. One is the voting disk heartbeat, which is the voting disks that are placed in the shared storage to which every node votes by telling it is alive and as in when every node votes it also identifies who are the other nodes that have voted the second heartbeat is the network heartbeat which is using the interconnect every node pings each other using the interconnect for both these heartbeats there is a default threshold level set for example there is a CSS miscount which defaults the 30 seconds in a standard cluster which is what determines what is the threshold within which each node should ping each other with the network heartbeat. Similarly, there is a disk timeout parameter which defaults to 200 seconds, which is the threshold level within which every node should vote to the voting disk. Now with these two in place, a node can be part of the cluster if only it is able to communicate with the other nodes with both these heartbeats the voting disk heartbeat as well as the network heartbeat given that the voting disk is generally not a single disk you will typically keep it in an odd number i'm going to explain why number one all the nodes will have to vote to this voting disk correct now what if there is a storage failure if there is a storage failure, my voting disk is going to be missing. So to overcome that, we can create, for example, three voting disks. Voting disks are recommended to be in odd numbers. Why? If one voting disk fails, I have two voting disks remaining. That's okay. But the catch is at any given time, every node should be able to access more than 50% of the voting disks. For example, if I had only one voting disk and that voting disk goes down, then all nodes in the cluster will come down. But if I had three and for whatever reason, one voting disk is down, the others can still reach the two other voting disks. So the nodes can still reach. But we have a peculiar situation where for whatever reason, it could be a network issue, it could be some cabling issue or whatever be the case. If one of the nodes is not able to access one of the voting disks, but another node is able to access all the voting disks. That's a clear case where one of them is not able to access all the voting disks. That is a case where the node that is not able to access the voting disks will be moved out of the cluster. It will get validated by either restarting the clusterware or restarting the node to check if it can do it. By doing a reboot, can it access it? If it cannot, then it will be in a shutdown state and you as the administrator will have to come and fix the reason for why it is not able to access the, all the voting disks. But I could have a peculiar situation where one voting disk is accessible by a group of nodes and three voting disks are accessed by another set of nodes. Now, I'm having a situation where there's a split brain. A split brain is where some nodes are together and some nodes two are together when they are all supposed to be together. So there is a split. Now only one set can survive because they are not able to talk to each other. So the nodes which are able to access the maximum number of voting disks will survive. But there is also the case wherein the node which is the master node for the OCR typically that will survive if both the sets of nodes are able to access equal number of voting disks. So out of three, if two are being accessed by this group, two are being accessed by this group, then both are having equal votes. So the one that has the OCR master node will survive. So thereby, these are the reasons through the voting disk access how nodes can get evicted. The second one is on the network heartbeat. Again here, if nodes cannot ping each other, then actually what happens is if one node is not able to ping the other node, but this node is able to reach, 
then it means there's some problem with it. Typically what happens under such circumstances is this node will realize, hey, I am not able to reach. I'm going to shoot myself on the head. Stone it algorithm, that's what it's called, wherein the node reboots by itself either first by starting the clusterware alone and that's a nice thing to happen since 11G release to 11.2.02 is that there could be applications which are running on that node by doing a reboot of the OS we are stopping them. So what Oracle clusterware by default does it it tries to restart only the clusterware and if that doesn't solve the problem then it goes for a node reboot which is the OS level reboot. So this is what happens with respect to node evictions. Even if you place your voting disks in ASM, if you use external redundancy, there is just one voting disk. If you use normal redundancy, it keeps three copies of the voting disk. And if you used high redundancy, it keeps five copies of the voting disk. There's one more type of a cluster called as an extended cluster. In an extended cluster, what happens is, an entire rack cluster or a grid infrastructure cluster is set up not just in one site but at two sites which are close to each other so that any local problems does not affect the entire cluster. So it could be like a 10 mile or 20 mile radius within which they are located. Under such circumstances some nodes are here, some nodes are here and they are together a single cluster. Under such circumstances both the set of nodes have their own local storage each is a failure group and whatever data is written here is replicated here whatever data is written here is replicated here and they also have voting disks now that i have a situation where voting disks are odd in number let's say i created three voting disks one is here and two is here for whatever be the reason this guy will be able to access more voting disks and they will always be part of the cluster in case of any network issue. So to overcome this what happens is Oracle provides a way to provide for a quorum vote disk. You can create one voting disk here, one voting disk here or two and two here and add another voting disk which is in a separate network which is accessible to both so that whoever is able to reach this voting disk will actually survive. So that's the context behind the quorum vote disk, especially useful in an extended cluster. So remember, voting is on the voting disk, ping is on the interconnect, nodes should be able to talk to each other to be part of the cluster. Whenever they are not able to talk, the nodes that are not able to talk are evicted out of the cluster and it tries to restart the clusterware or the node to bring them back. But if it still cannot, then it stays out. Then a manual intervention is required to fix this issue. That's about node evictions and how Oracle Clusterware handles it.